Yeah, well, I guess we'll, we'll get started. Um, <clears throat> um, we're going to do the roll call. Um, Mike Sermon and I'm here. Uh, Jackie, um, her husband is in um, serious condition, so she uh, called me and she will not be here if she's excused. Um, and Mark? Okay. Here. Uh, Kathy Barron? She sure. always runs late, so she might be. Okay. Uh, John Basu. Has 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 he been here this year at all? Was I he? don't think this year. I think he was here a couple times last year. Yeah, I've never seen him. Well. Yeah, just a couple times. Okay. And then Do Dominic DeFranco, has he been here this year? Dominic has been once yeah. or twice, yeah. Yeah, Dominic's been here a couple times. This is real, he's a sewer, uh, he does waterproofing sewer work, so this is probably in his last time, I think. Yeah, I, I remember seeing him. Yeah, he came in a little late or whatever. Yeah. And, and Stan's then, been ill. And I, I think Stan is, he, we were told by the mayor that he's um, going to be giving up his, his seat. Okay. Yeah, he told me, I, I talked with him a week, a week ago, and he said that he didn't have the energy to do He said the board on the poor authority for sure, and this one also, he said he couldn't focus enough anymore. Okay. Okay. So we're we're possibly going to have up to two seats open, and um, you know, if anyone's interested to throw their name in a hat, you know, then uh, let, let let me know or let uh, Mayor Morley know. Um, interested in people who you know want to contribute and want to be involved. So just to throw that out there. Um, I put public comments at the beginning. Uh, on the agenda, but we, you know, this is a small group. Just if you guys have anything to say, you, you know, just go ahead. I'm happy to hear any anything you have to contribute. Um, I had a reports. Uh, uh, Dennis told me Mayor Morley, Morley told me he wouldn't be here. Um, he'll be here for the uh, council meeting. Um, but is there a, uh, is there anything that uh, you want to add? Um, no, just. Hearing some positive things that you know, like the hotels getting ready for the uh, big convention and you know, the captains, and it just sounds like everything's pretty positive right now. So, yeah, we're meeting uh, Heather Elmer, uh, uh, Mayor Morley, and I are meeting Heather Elmer tomorrow morning um, with uh, somebody from OD yeah. and okay. ODNR. They're gonna um, bring canoes right at the end of the uh, uh, RNC. Um, down for a couple days uh, in Eastlake um, so we can uh, do cool, uh, canoe tours. So they're going to bring one tomorrow. We're going to go on a little excursion, I guess. And, hmm. But we're going to all push it and um, hopefully we can get a, a good turnout. So um, that should be a positive thing. Uh, other than that, it's been, you know, um, just real busy. You know, we've got a lot of construction going on and from my end. And everything's moving. You know, a lot of things are going on. So. And we'll probably have a big year next year with the schools coming up. Right. So two schools going next year. So that was actually one, one item I was going to bring up later in the meeting, but uh, I, I went on the internet and <clears throat> I tried to find new construction in the city of Eastlake. And I actually found nine homes that are for sale. And I don't know if they're actually being built, um, but I found on the internet, and we could pass this around, I guess, of, um, it's on Breeze Cove Avenue. It's probably the condos over here. Lake Breeze. This is the condos he's selling them. Yeah, there's. Uh, it says that they're new construction. Yeah. Um, three bedroom, two bath, and there's nine of them. Are they actually being built or to be built? Or yeah, they're being built. They're at, well. We're doing the final reviews, and it's it's kind of like if you want to say the second phase of this condo development right next door. Uh huh. Uh, a lot of it was built, and then there was it stopped. And then we have a new owner, and he's gone through his his uh, all his work. Uh, he's gone through planning and everything, and now he's just getting his final reviews with CT consultants, and he'll be ready to be uh, start pretty soon here. How, how big is that base going to be? Do you, do you know? Is it just nine condos, or is it? Yeah, I have the. It's going to be uh, there. Yeah, nine condos. So, okay. Yeah. Do, do you know who the builder is on that? Because it, it just says Howard Hanna is the listing agent. It doesn't. Uh, uh, I think ProBuild, but I don't know. It's I don't want to swear on that. But that's what I remember. I think ProBuild is going to do it. Okay. 
Um, if anyone wants to see what they actually, I talked to the owner. I think he has. Uh, he told me today he has four units already sold. Oh, great. Okay, yeah, because they're a decent price, one seventy to one ninety. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's right next door here, right on the other side of the bank. Okay, good. Yep, yeah, that's that's awesome. And then um, in business, um, I pretty much. Uh, I guess we should start off with um, with Mark. Uh, what, what, how, how the meeting went with uh, the port authority and the land that you were talking about. Uh, to get into the port authority's name to uh, try to get grants. Uh, yeah. If you want to discuss that, we probably have a little more information on it than I do. I know we did a lot of research on it. You guys, or you in particular, did a lot of research on it, and we thought we had a we found out that uh, that kind of came to a dead end because it looks like. Got sold to Willoughby or First Energy or some somebody bought it or something. Yeah, yeah what I what I found was, I guess there's 6.4 acres on Erie Road that would be adjacent to property that's already owned uh, by the Port Authority, which would free up, you know, I think you said up to three hundred thousand dollars in grants right, yeah. to improve uh, dockage and and it looks like park, yeah. from what I found and I think Jason you found the same thing is. That the land was given to Eastlake in 1995, and two weeks later, it was sold by Eastlake for $90,000 to the city of Willoughby, and it's in their name today. Um, and I think from our discussion in uh, the Port Authority meeting, um, the city of Willoughby was approached and uh, about that land, and, and uh, we were told Go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much is what it was. I mean, it was highlighted in bold letters. That we've already discussed this, and the answer is still no. So I don't know what that really meant, but uh, that's what that came to Chris on. Okay. And they said know. what the importance of that land is to them? I have no idea. The, the no six, idea. The 6.4 acres that were requested actually is owned by CEI now. It was originally Willoughby and then Willoughby gave it to East Lake and then it was immediately flipped over to CEI. I think they were going to do, they are going to widen the road there or something. Or there, so they could have more room for the power plant or something. Yeah, but there's no purpose for Willoughby to own it right now because it's it's just... It, it well, owns it. CEI owns it now. There's no purpose for it now either. Is it CEI or Willoughby that owns it? The last I saw was Willoughby. CEI yeah, owns the 6.4 acres. Willoughby owns the, uh, the, the former Little League fields where the bull ramp is and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Why Willoughby owns that? Because of the water treatment plant back there. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think the goal is to try to figure out a way to either swap land with them or get them to sell it to us. Well, well Faith sent the email out. She's, a, she, I got, she's actually going to approach Willoughby. Yes. And uh, it wasn't entirely discouraging. It sounds like they were at least open to talking, but like as of now, it just weren't. Uh, well, what you have is you have, uh, I'm not sure who the service director or the, is it a past service director? Who was that Anthony guy? He was definitely against anything, any land, anything going to Portland, the water treatment guy. So, you know, you have one or two people who are always against it. John Wiles, I don't think, was ever for it. So. Every time we went to their council, though, and talked to them, they were always very, very favorable with working with Eastlake and the Port Authority. I would say if we needed to, go start going to them and talking to them. But I'm not sure if that's what Will be wants. I haven't heard back from Chris Wood and that. I'm sure we're calling him. Uh, will, will you keep us updated? Sure, certainly, yeah. yeah. The, the, our next available option would be to try to purchase those two little parcels just on the other side of the bridge on West Island Drive. But you'd have to come up with a significant amount of money, which we might or might not have. I don't know where this fund money is that we supposedly have for land acquisition. Uh, the mayor said there's supposed to be 107 or 116,000. I can't remember which in there. So we really need to know that. And if we came up with maybe, if you're talking with Elmer tomorrow, uh, uh, Heather tomorrow, you might want to ask her if we came up with half. Could she find funding for the other half? Maybe we could use. How much are the two uh, lots? Stan said that when he talked to the guy, they wanted 140. He had the guy down for civic reasons down to 75,000. So we probably have to enlist Stan to call him back, and I'm sure he'll do that on our behalf. It was a significant drop. At first, he wasn't dropping it down, but Stan's worked on it for probably close to a year, talking to him off and on. And 
and uh, Heather said she'd get some money, but we would have to come up with some money too, so that's how it was going. Uh, but for her to get grants, you almost need to own something adjacent to make it worthwhile. Maybe we could get some type of lease. When we did, you're saying you're meeting with ODNR. ODNR is the one that told us that they, this was 15 years ago or 18 years ago, that they would give us the like $350,000 to improve that park area down there because we get we, we got the money together to put the boat launch ramp in. So they said that, but we had a long-term lease. We had a long-term lease with the city of Eastlake for 25 years, and that was the lease that they would have accepted for us, for them to put money into it. But we had put the boat launch ramp in at a cost about $35,000. Just when we had that done, uh, we brought them up and they were gonna give us matching funds. So that's where we're gonna get our money, it was from ODNR originally. So if we bought an adjacent parcel, you know, use our money, maybe we can get matching funds again or something. They will work in that direction, so. I, I wouldn't let this thing go with Willoughby too much, I don't see why. We have people that sit on that board for the water treatment. They're the ones that, the reason that land's controlled, that land was given to them for the water treatment plant. They have stated that there's absolutely no way they could use that property, but we have surveyed, that we paid the money to survey, and we had an agreement with them, I'm gonna tell you a point blank agreement that that land was gonna be transferred to our name. That's why we paid the money to have it surveyed. It wasn't just, we already had a lease on it. Why would we have released the same land, you know? So obviously there's something amiss here, you know? And there's probably a couple people, you know, in the wood pile behind the scenes, uh, controlling what's going on. But will be, or Eastlake has a say in what goes on over there too. I don't think that Eastlake's been very active in the, what goes on at the water treatment plant, what happens there. I think if you had some activity there and spurred some interest, it's both the Willoughby's and Eastlake's benefit. We can get money coming into this area for grants to improve that area, that property over there, or park over there. And I think it's in the interest of Willoughby's too, and I think we explained that to the other council people. They're not dumb people, they're pretty good people. They, they really are. I've had to deal with them on a few issues. And they're pretty reasonable guys over there, the whole council is. So I would say if we got past the, the one brick wall, which probably is a service director people and a water treatment guy, that we probably have some success, maybe not immediately, probably over there period of time. I think even Mayor Anderson was in favor of all this stuff at one point too. Yeah. The, the two parcels, what, what's the name, where are those located? Again? Right across the bridge, that little flat bridge when you're going on West Island. There's a, like a thumb, uh, it's like a peninsula that goes out there and the only access is to that peninsula is these two parcels. It's about five acres of land. I'll ask Heather uh, tomorrow. I mean, I don't know who our representatives are to that water treatment, but it seems like Willoughby's kind of taking the lead on it, and so they feel they have the ability to say whatever they want. They're the ones that kind of put the kibosh to the canoe and kayak club the last time, the director over there, you know? It's all, it's all new, new people, it's me, John, and Dave right now. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Yes, this is West Island Drive here, so it's Admiral until it gets to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Once you get, and here's the boat launch ramp right here. That's the boat launch ramp right there. It goes right, right out into that waterway right there. So it's these two parcels right here that you're looking at, and this is the land that is in question that we were going to use for a park over there, which would give you an adjacent property that over here we could probably get money to do stuff with. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be on this parcel here. Correct. Yeah, that's so part of it. Right. So, so by purchasing the two lots, you they're landlocked, then basically it's of no use to them. Correct. At all. Correct. Right, which would make the other property one kind of lot, mm -hmm. uh, one big lot where our boat launch ramp is, where the concession stand is, you know. So we got a lot of activities here. And if, in fact, I think before you got here, it uh, seems will be or someone has changed the lock on us over there. We had people going down there to try to pay for, to use the boat launch ramp. And they were told by a city employee that they're not allowed to use it. And it's been closed. And there's been a lot changed down there. Our harbor master went down there to try to find. So it seems like the, 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 it's escalating a little bit, and what, you know, and who's got rights down there or whatever. 
even though we have the lease, you know, it appears they're changing locks and doing things. That's what I'm guessing is happening. I will say when we, when the three of us went down and toured the uh, the water treatment plant, uh, it was indicated to us that that uh, the parcels of land they only been through some parcels of land out in front of the water treatment plant out towards Lakeshore. Anyway, long story short, it was indicated to us that they felt that uh, yeah they were going to have to increase capacity there at some point, but that he, he basically indicated he thought he could do it with what they had with the existing facility. They have some unused tanks, they have some unused capacity and things there, and he felt that they would be able to do that, you know, utilize the existing facility rather than expand outward. Yeah, now I heard they might want to extend out to Erie Street, which is fine, you know, because there's yeah, plenty of property. That's what they would have to acquire from CDI. Yeah, right. They're locked in by CDI. Yep. Yeah. yeah, if CDI's got that, then they're pretty much. Uh, but this parcel we're talking about, the transmission lines come right up by the river right there and the Corporation Creek's right there. There's absolutely no way they could build over there. There's nothing, they can't get there. You know, it's like if there's not enough land to make a road there, let alone be used to expand the plant. And they can't go underneath the high tension wires anyhow. So there's no way they could use it. The only thing you can use it for is a park, like we're trying to use it for. So really it's, the Navy even admitted as much, so, you know. Hey, do you have an idea how many acres that is? Or how well, we, all we requested out of that total area over there, you probably got about six acres or so. We we were, we had it surveyed for two acres, two and a half acres or something like that. That we had surveyed that we could operate easily and do everything we need to do and still improve the adjacent land because it's all under the transmission lines and it was just like parking, uh, impervious pavers for you know water control and all that. So we had a pretty good plan. I was going to have a couple of pavilions so if people want to come down and maybe get married or have a picnic or whatever. So it was just open air stuff. It wasn't like anything was going to be occupied or rebuilt or anything. So just like open air picnic activity type stuff and improvement with, you know, uh, shrubbery and flowering trees and that type. You can't have big ones because you're going to need high tension from the other areas you could. Just to give a useful destination like a park destination like we had in most other cities. Right now you don't have too many places like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I mean if we could find out, you know, what they do. And, and like I said, I've gone to their city council meetings before and we had them on board at one time 18 years ago to donate money to work with us. And I'm sure that we get back to that point. But I think right now it's more of an administrative thing on, you know, who's calling the shots and what, what the purpose is behind it. Maybe there's some reason I don't know about, like all of a sudden that oil well went in there at one time, you know. When I asked about it, I got pretty much told just to shut up and mind your own business. It's not your, not your dealings, you know. That's that's above your pay grade, so you know, left alone. But I think that was a big failure, also, you know. So the reasons they're trying to occupy that land, I don't think are very valid or good or for community interest in the long run, you know. Mm -hmm. you no know, way there should be an oil wall down there. I don't think it's right on the river. I mean, that was, it's, it's, that's almost ungodly what that happened there. I think so. But I've been told. It's not my business. So. I know we talked in a Port Authority meeting um, if there was other land that East Lake owned that would serve the same purpose for um, getting the, uh, the grants. Um, or the, uh, if you don't have something adjacent, though, <coughs> I think you have to have adjacent with list Heather. The list of everything the city has. And I think there was one park that. Well, you'll be with Heather tomorrow. She'll be able to more clearly define. I mean, the rules, I don't know, the rules seem like they're always in a state of flux okay. about what they're allowed to do. And if you're with ODNR, you'll be talking to two key people. Okay. They would tell you tomorrow, or I mean, whenever you see them, what they think you could do or not do. What we have done is developed a real good relation. We had them come up probably about three or four times a year just to see what we were doing, working on projects at uh, wind wall improvement and extension. So we had a real good relationship with them for a while. So they were very helpful. They can tell you what you can do to make things work a little bit. So I think from what we were told before is you had to have like some was adjacent so that you could use that to add on to that parcels. Those two parcels would probably start to give us, you know, those two small parcels that gave us to that little park in the back where that thumbprint is. That would be two parcels to start the process of enlarging that parcel so you had a sizable park. Okay. That would include the concrete.
encompass the area for a bull on trail. Unless there's some objections of, you know, from some administration that they have that's a valid reason. That, you know, otherwise, we should just drop it and move on because God knows we're going to spend a lot of time on it. Well, yeah, I think get somewhere on it. I think it's a great idea. You know, yeah. Have a park and have uh, a lot of money come into the city from. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I, Chris on came on the port authority I think four or five years ago, and he says, "Mark, this is a no brainer." So we've been having a lot of problems getting this through because I know both the mayors. He goes, "I'll get this through." He goes, "I'll get it through." And five years later, he's just throwing his hat in the ring, just about you know. When he called me the other day, he was very furious about the, the email he got from uh, John Wiles. Because he had talked to him with me before, and it did seem like they would allow us to do that. So it seems like some has changed. We don't know what that is. I think this is all interconnected. Um, the next uh, few items on here, um, I'd like to invite into our meetings um, the, the Metro Parks, um, Lake County, uh, Economic Development, Auditors, Chagrin River, um, Land Bank. All the government agencies that may have funds or grants or um, suggestions on how we can improve our city and bring some money into our city. So um, I will, uh, Mark, I'll, I'll talk to you about, about this, you know, inviting them in uh, right on a consistent basis. Well, with the land bank, you know, you had John Rogers, didn't you get him in here? Right. Who, yeah, I know there's, political office. Yeah, I know there's, there's, do you know how many um, houses are in East Lake that are in the land bank? Well, this year, uh, we're probably looking at maybe four or five, but we're also looking at a big project for the city of the old um, JFK building. So, uh, the mayor is working with them on that. So, once they get an answer on that, we'll see what's going to be left. Uh, for us this year on maybe homes, but that's probably going to, you know, do a lot. All right, so are you there's four or five they're going to take this year? Or? No, it's, I got four or five on a list, okay. so I haven't actually got the total funding yet of what they're going to give us, because they're still working through, like, the JFK building and that, so um, I think pretty comfortable that's what we'll, hopefully we'll get all of it, you know, for what I have requested, but you don't know. Every but, year it could be a little, every year is a little different. But does the land bank retain ownership of the parcel? No. It's, it's a development paper. corporation, don't they? It yes. retains ownership of the prior parcels. The land bank, no. The parcel goes back to the person who owns it. But the land bank does, sometimes they will take a parcel or they will, you know, re, they'll redevelop the land. They have a corporation that does that. Yeah, something I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, it's actually kind of related to the land bank, but it's a development company that they use, so they're getting properties from the land bank, developing them, and reselling them. Well, there I've had people contact me, builders, and that, and they've asked me how to get you know the properties, and I said, well, you have to call you know call John Rogers, but um, in the end, like I'm still cutting or citing grass at some of these vacant lots that are bank owned still. Even though they tore down the house, it's still in the bank or mortgage company's name. So they don't, they're not in the business of really taking all these properties and everything. That's not what they're, they're here to get rid of blight. So. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if. But he may be a part of me and they have to come down and he may be able to help us out with other, other things than land bank too. Right, right. Yeah, I think we need to invite all these groups in and see if the state can make it help. And uh, I printed out the, I don't know, uh, Dave, I'm sure you're dealing with this, but the foreclosures, yeah, active foreclosures in the city and um, I don't know, either taking a guess, 150? Could be, but I don't. I don't like to throw out numbers on that, especially because a house could be under foreclosure, and it'll never hit foreclosure. Um, a lot of these houses they get filed for foreclosure, and then a lot of them don't don't even go through. They get saved, or you know, the, the people there make a deal with their bank and they work it out. So 
that's why I don't really like to throw out a whole number, you know, a big number on there because sometimes people will get really scared and say, oh my God, we have that many homes, but a lot of them. I know, I know a short, sale, get a short sale could make it not a foreclosure, Correct. but it's really the same thing. Here, Correct. Here, here. So, and then there's actually Zillow had a list of pre foreclosures. I guess that's three months behind, and there's a 60, 70 in pre foreclosure. And this is uh, national, nationwide. It's, it's where I came from, it was the same kind of numbers, even higher. And that the the income level of that city was quite high, so it's it's everywhere. It's a national problem. It always will be a national problem. Well, that's another nut that I don't know how to solve. <laughs> yeah, now the land bank might might help a little bit there. I mean, just just to eliminate the property that's been vacant for years and years, and you're cutting the grass, and or you're, right. your your team's cutting the grass. But. Uh, um, I've heard about some other interesting stuff. I, I didn't know we had new construction, so I was really happy to find that because I didn't know any any was going on in the city. And well, we had a lot of manufacturing. Uh, you know, we've had a few companies built. Uh, you know, at, put additions on in that, and uh, a few more coming in. And uh, I expect probably one or two new houses yet this year. Plus, uh, we may have a small apartment complex coming in yet. So yeah, we have a lot. It's going to be busy in the next two years, three years. It's going to be very busy. Are the are the new con are the new construction? Is that just lots that that are in like a? Uh, some of the new homes uh, we're getting that are along Lakeshore, and also down. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Galena area down down on the river there behind McDonald's, off of Lakeshore. There's the little streets down in there. Um, we're getting a couple of new homes down there, possibly uh, Lakeshore Boulevard. And then once in a while, you just get called for a lot. Someone wants to build a house. Uh, we have another new house going up on uh, Waldemere. Um, that's going to be a uh, um, the um, oh, well, habitat for you, man. Yeah, there you go. Cause he lives on the street. That's why he knows. I live next to it. Is that where it's going? Right next to it. So they're going to break ground. Hopefully, they wanted to break ground by July 6, but that's not going to happen. So they'll be breaking ground probably in a few weeks. So that's going to be going on in our city, which uh, is a good thing too. That's a positive thing. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I uh, oh, go ahead. I wanted to ask, uh, did anything develop with that property behind Trader Jack's? Uh, the mayor is also working on that one, but we're hearing rumblings. Yes. Uh, Something may happen there, yeah. That's Borax Lightning? Yeah, Borax Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I did that one into uh, uh, Chagrin River Green over there, those guys from there. They're talking about possibly looking at doing something in the near future, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, their impression was, and I think I explained this to you, but I'm not sure if I explained to everybody, that uh, you know everybody in the city and the Port Authority was against them developing and building, and they weren't welcome to meetings and that. And I said, no, I think that climate's changed, and I think it's open, and we encourage you to interact with us. We've been doing a lot of work to set it up so something could be done down there. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm thinking that my indication, talking with the owners over there, that probably within the next year they're going to be making some proposals to do some building or stuff down there. Yeah. Bar, restaurant, condos type thing. Yep. So, I told them that was all set up. We've done that. You know, there, there are things. Well, the city hasn't done anything. I said we, we actually set that up as a development area. So, you know, you walked into a very good thing. It's been set up so that we're ready for you for development. We changed the zoning, uh, or the opportunity for changing the zoning to make it easier. So I said there's been a lot of work that we've done to get it to the point where you can walk in right now. And we'd be working with you to help develop the, the parcels and the property down there. So I would say probably within a year. They're not going to sit too long. They're probably going to get moving. On yeah, this. I've heard the same rumors and I've had a little conversation. And so it, it's, that'll be a good thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, construction's all about timing. So yeah. it's just, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little slow. And then when it's you think you're slow, it goes like game busters. And mm -hmm. you got more construction you can handle. So. Do we know who the executor of Borax Estate is and 
it's just, what, their, what their interests are. I believe it's his, his children. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's who we have to work with to, to try and for as far as transferring that land to uh, someone to develop it or just someone, someone like that. Yeah, I, I believe his one son is. Don't you know? Again, I don't want to give you false information, but I believe his one son is definitely involved. Yeah. And I believe there is a daughter. Awesome. I think so. Yeah. yeah, they're they're my neighbors. So yeah. uh, I think. Uh, I don't think either of his children ever had any interest in like the marina business because it, I'm sure if they did, they would have been already involved. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I, so I assume, I assume they would be very interested in the, in unloading that property. Yeah. Yes, that's what it seems like. Yeah. yeah I think there's a couple people maybe. Uh, I don't want to say battling for it, but uh, talking to them about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I printed off um, the new construction that's uh, surrounding our city. And um, I really think, you know, once we get the, uh, the government agencies in here, we need to get the builders in here next and uh, see what's luring them to the other cities and not East Lake. Um, I know I printed out a Willoughby Point. Um, I believe that is that is right by uh, right in downtown right in downtown Willoughby. Um, I think most of it's built out. It's uh, condo style townhouses. And I, um, and I know they have another little section by the uh, the courthouse, and then they have a huge development, which is uh, putting out these different plans. Kinez Homes is a big player um, all throughout Willoughby. Um, I know they have the one area on 91. He's looking at things here too. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if they're getting abatements uh, for taxes if they're getting. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, what we don't have an abatement program here, um, but I know he is looking at some of the property down by the river too. Because okay. they've got a you know, Willoughby Point, they've got right across from um, the fine arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got that huge development and they got one out in Fa <coughs> on Fairport too. I think the last meeting the mayor mentioned him. I did that develop or he's doing that development out of Fairport. Yeah, and then there's, and then he also has the one in Willowick, which, you know, that's all around us. And, uh, you know, they, they're, I mean, it, it just gives a, do, a description of everything that he's doing and 52 houses in Willowick and just three projects in Willoughby, which I know there's got to be maybe 100 homes. Um, and these are decent priced homes, 150000 and up. Well, I think so, in East Lake, though, you're, you do have a lot of land built out. I think in Willoughby, where you're getting, you know, they're tearing down buildings, or, you know, buildings around downtown and then re redeveloping it. So, but I think for, as homes, we have a lot, you know, we have individual lots, but I don't see where, uh, too many areas where we can bring in, like, a whole subdivision. And, well, Boric's Landing is... is well, yeah, I mean, something like that, if, if that ever comes, to, yeah. But I think there is talk about stuff like that going on already. Yeah, I, I think we should try to help push that along as best we can. I mean, I, I printed out the builders in this area, Polte, Ryan, Harrington, Kamez. Um, I'd love to see what we could do to get their interest, trees, um, instead of waiting. But you still wanted to do the, uh, that conference with them, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, it might be easier to, to break it up with builders and then maybe realtors and brokers and and just break them up into smaller groups. But um, yeah, I just I just see it going on, uh, you know, activity all around new construction activity all around our city, and I just I mean I, I know there is some because I it just seems like it's really very minute compared to what's going on everywhere else. Well, we've only just changed that that referendum thing, so people aren't really aware of it. All they remember is every time they came here, they had to go through that, and they walked away. They'd come here, find out, and just leave. So that's still in their mind. It's going to take a little time to let them know that that's available, you know. So they don't have to go through that process. That was a thing that was choking in all the time. Yeah, I think we could reach out through Lake Jaga uh, or Realtors and connect with everybody and then bring them into the meetings and 
whatever we could possibly offer them to get, you know, get interested in our city. It could be a good thing. Um, I also printed out a vacant land. Um, there's a lot of vacant land uh, that is for sale throughout our city, um, which, you know, for construction, uh, there's uh, a lot of these, a lot of these parcels are, you know, three acres, two acres. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of land that I found 15 right off the bat this afternoon, which is just uh, land for sale. That, you know, would be perfect for something to be built there. And then this is, um, I don't know if anybody, if you, you probably have this list, but uh, commercial real estate for sale. I was surprised how much is for sale in our city. Um, 25, I found 25 uh, commercial buildings that are for sale, which uh, I don't know, there was that kind of activity going on in our city. But yeah, that's what the one that uh, the mayor and uh, Kathleen, and, you know, they keep that list and working on that one. Yeah, it just seems like a lot. I mean, it, I, I don't see, you know, I, I just didn't know what kind of activity was going on or how long it's been for sale or if there's you know, a lot of activity or if it's just sitting there and if it's if it's uh, vacant. I'll right. be honest, I don't keep track of how long it's, you know, it's been on there. But the mayor, he's been keeping track of that. And like I said, him and Kathleen Barry have been working on it. Yeah, I'll reach out to Kathleen and See, I mean, I bet that might be another uh, meeting that we have to. You know, well, I think, you know, you want to have the meetings with the builders, and then I think it's a great idea. I think you just find a date and set it up and send it out, the, you know, send out an invitation and, and do it, you know. Yeah. Whether it's after, you know, maybe in the beginning of September or August or whenever you feel comfortable with it and, and just set it up and do it. Okay. Because uh, I know the. Uh, Council is most likely not going to have a meeting at the end of July. We start the recess. Yeah, we reset. We have one meeting in July at the beginning, and then officially it's a recess till the end of August. Yeah, the last meeting in August. So, so two meetings are skipped. Right. I'm going to skip two meetings. So so maybe in the beginning of September or somewhere after uh, Labor Day or somewhere. Yeah, so so if we set our next meeting is August and then. We should uh, pencil in, you know, pushing the September meeting for the builders, yep. and then just you know, take them one by one. Maybe we could just invite the uh, um, government government organizations in um, with the builders if we think they're going to would help. It's not, that's that's pretty much what I have. I don't know if anyone else if. Uh, any uh, you know, from the public wants to make any comments or say anything, you're welcome to. Tomorrow we meet with Heather. Uh, yeah. The last executive board meeting, which was just last Thursday, I think, uh, the subject of the Sheer River Watershed Partners, they currently lease in a little uh, kind of run-down office location in downtown Moby one of the upper stories. And we have some props out there, air sure goes out, it goes out to like 100 degrees in there. Uh, they're looking to relocate, and they're considering East Lake. Uh, here's a, now, um, bring them here. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. fantastic. You yeah. should invite any means possible. Your, the, our biggest competition might be Chagrin Falls, the mayor there. Um, he, like, some historical sign Tomko. or something, just left, Tomko, yeah, left, and he wants to get him in Chagrin Falls. Sugar Falls could be like our biggest, uh, you know, they like to do their cutesy projects there and make grant money for that. They could, they could be like our biggest uh, rival as far as grant money is concerned too. So it absolutely is. They they have hit up the Sugar River Partners for street lamps, parking lot improvement. They've got a ton of money from over the past few years. And Bill's been very active in that. And, and we want to keep them in Lake County. Like if we, if we lost them somewhat, or like if they did come to East Lake, we would want them to go somewhere in Lake County. But like, uh, because, because you know it's tax revenue employer taxes and that type of thing. But, but if we can if we can think of a place to put them, 
that where they can go and, and affordably go. And they, they have a preference for Lake County too, because most of the Chicago Watershed partners. How, how many employees do they have? Six. Six or seven. But there wasn't the mayor talking there was still a space, I believe, at the captain's stadium? Yeah, the old visitor's the old visitor's space. Room. Yeah, so that would be perfect for them. I thought the rent was pretty reasonable. Up there. Yeah. No, that'd be perfect. I, oh. Absolutely, because I'm going to tell you what. They, the, I, I was on the executive board for many years, and the focus goes on all these little, like you said, cutesy projects upriver, where they're spending a lot of time and money, and, and God bless them because they're bringing the money in to do it. but. They're overlooking what happens down here, uh, right by where you live. I mean, corporate or that uh, is that. What's that creek that goes behind you? Guys, huh? War Creek. Yeah, War Creek. I mean, the city of Nenner spent. They got millions of dollars to put these big event, cement revetments in, and Willoughby got a bunch of money to do that also and trail that creek. And I guess the East Lake just turned back into a regular dumpy little creek, and they have to have to throw concrete in to keep the houses from washing around when it comes into the river. Yeah. So there's very little attention paid to the area that needs most of the attention, and that's, you know, when you have your flooding and that type of stuff, because all those tributaries that they're spending millions of dollars planting trees and flowers on, all that water's coming down here. And of course it helps it's to a small degree, but we get proportionate very little help down here for projects. So if you had them down here, that'd be well. Because they do do a great job of getting money. I'm going to tell you, they're fantastic. And if you put stuff in front of them, They'll get it done. Yeah, it's so okay. You want them right here. You want them like with yes, your actual exactly. eyes looking, yes. looking right where the like right where they should like be the rock right here, like a like, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's anything that could happen, get them like at that Lake County Stadium. Uh, the captain, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what happens there. So, well, that's that's pretty much it, and uh, I'll. I'll be, in, I'll be in touch with everybody over the next. Oh, I, I want to bring something up. Uh, Angelo notified me that a few weeks ago, maybe you could tell him a little bit about it. The, the county was it the county thing, Angelo, that sponsored that thing about all the zoning and things. Maybe you went to most of these. I only showed up for one or two of them. You, you might want to tell these gentlemen what you experienced while you were there. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of one of my interests have yeah, figured out already is city planning and zoning. Um, the American Planning Association, which is the national organization of all city planners, hosts conferences for cities and residents and other interested people uh, about two or three times a year, and they had one in Concord Township. Um, I was there. Another East Lake resident was there, who's also a city planner. Mark Kane showed up. Also, um, Willoughby Councilman Chris Wooden from Willoughby and their rep for Port Authority showed up, and they had a lot of really good. Um, both economic and community development kind of presentations. They had Mark Rontella from the Lake County Port Authority. They had um, the CEO of the organization that's redoing all public square. They had Heather Elmer from the Watershed Partners. She was there and they basically gave several excellent presentations on projects that cities are doing, projects that cities can do, funding that's available. Um, Mark Rontella gave a really good presentation on generational housing trends, so up through 2030, what kind of demands they're seeing as far as population, what millennials want in housing as far as walkability, mixed use, um, you know, like bicycling, having different things to walk to, a sense of place. But, uh, you know, I think Mark, you and Chris, you went to um, something on economic development financing, which is right. something that Port authorities often use. Uh, I think they probably talked about TIF districts. I don't think we have a TIF district in here, but often it's used for um, infrastructure improvements and tax abatements. Um, there's a, also a new law that I think the state just passed as far as like a downtown revitalization district, which would um, allow other kinds of tax abatements. But since you brought up um, the one marina, you can create this special new like historic downtown district. You only need one historic building in it. I know there's a Portage Road house that's, I think it's like a home path property. And, I believe Kathy Berry mentioned the last ECDC meeting about how that might be a good candidate to kind of test the waters on rezoning and rezone that to like short development district um, and allow mixed use for professional offices there. Um, but if you got at least one historic property, so it doesn't have many, you, that could open up a lot of options. Like you said, that's a priority development area as far as the comprehensive plan is concerned. So, um, but that plan was really great. I have all the presentation materials. If anyone in ECDC or otherwise would like those materials to look through, I think they're very informative and could 
kind of provide starting points for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, it was great to see other East Lake residents there. I know our city is one of very few that don't doesn't have a dedicated city planner. Um, so it's just good to see other East Lake people show up for the presentations. There's another one coming up in November. Um, you know, if anyone who works for the city or is otherwise interested could go, I think it's a really good um, thing because you know, Chagrin Falls, they're going. You know, Willoughby, they're going. Willoughby Hills, they're going. All these other cities are going but us. So you ask yourself why everyone's going somewhere else. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity for East Lake residents and officials to really, you know, get up to the same level with these other cities and learn from them and what kind of strategies and tactics they're doing to learn and learn from them. Where I saw is a lot of information that you're, you're trying to call us. They're already doing that in a big way. They got it on city banks. They got the stuff on the computer. I'm not good with that kind of crap, but uh, you know they've got it. They've got it set up so anyone from the cities can start accessing all that information, and they've got development plans already in place, basically. So they're doing a lot of the work that we're trying to do ourselves uh, on a regional thing, uh, for the whole region. You know, they were giving some examples of people from Willoughby what they were doing, or not Willoughby, Painesville, and they were getting a lot of grants for doing some of their upgrading their housing stock and all that, you know, so there's regular agencies that help out. And like he said, if you have the information, you just get online, you can find out, we'll get a lot of help from these groups. There are already, you know, sponsored groups for economic development too, so probably ought to be, you know, keeping in touch with that. I was only there for just the one session, but I'll tell you what, it was, it was pretty interesting, it really was, you know, it's a lot more advanced than I thought it would be, that's for sure, how they interact with each other and how they progress through things, so. Well, if you could send me that, that information, and then uh, at the beginning you talked about uh